Hello, welcome back to AJM Learn. Today, I'm gonna show you how to set up the summary block in Squarespace, do the internal design settings, and then, as always, a little bit of CSS. Um, quickly, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you like my videos, um, and let's get started. All right, so first, let's put one in place. So I'm in my little sandbox site here. Go add block, add your summary block, stretch it to whatever width you want, just depending on what you're doing, you might wanna, I don't know, we'll go over kind of how to make everything fit. Um, and then always pull up the bottom as, you know, as far as it'll go. So here's what we have. Next, you're going to click the pencil. Okay, content. This is where it's telling the summary block what, like what information to pull. So summary blocks have to get information from somewhere else in your site. It's typically a blog or a product page. So you'll see here, I this is my sandbox site. So I have just some random like placeholder stuff set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my blog. It will pre-populate anything that can be pulled in the summary block. So really it's like events blog store for the most part. Okay, so I've told it to pull from the blog. I, again, just have these like three random fake blogs in here. Um, primary metadata. So a lot of times I turn this off. If you, like if it's important, if you wanna show people the category or the author or location, all those things, go for it. I'm just gonna turn both off, but you could show two sets of metadata. Oops. And then you go into filter items. So um, I don't have any categories on because this is my sandbox site, but actually let me save this and exit. I'll go over and show you how to do it. So if I go to my blog, so let's just say, go into settings on the blog, go to options, categories. So let's call it test category, save. Let's make this one, add the same one. And let's also add another one. Just wanted to kind of show you. Do this super quickly. Okay, and while I'm in here, I'll show you too. If you want to feature something, I'll show you where this is, but in the blog, you're gonna have to go to options here, featured posts. Um, similar, you'll do something similar with your products. So I'll show you where that applies. So let's get back to where we were. So over here, jumping back in, back down to filter items. So now I have categories. I can choose what categories to filter by. So I could tell it I only want to show other test category, or I could tell it, actually, no, I want you to show these two categories. So you can check multiple, or you could do none and just show everything, but that's how you would filter. You could show featured only, so it's only gonna show the one that I have toggled on, toggled on as featured. I'm gonna go back and just not filter. And that's the basic setup. So now you're really ready to get this styled. So if you hop over into the little design tab, first you wanna choose the look. So the wall is the best one to do if you have different ratios of photos and you want kind of that like, I don't know, uh, more organic feel where things kind of all fall together. I tend to not use that one. I'm way too OCD for that. And so carousel list, um, you're probably familiar with the general, you know, styling of a carousel on the list. So carousel, there would be some arrows up here. Um, if you had more products, you could go to, I'm in the wrong spot. You could do a list where it's gonna stack. There's some cool, if you scroll down in the post, I've put um, some cool plugins that make the photo like full width and can, you can make this one really cool. Um, I tend to use grid, so let's just, I think this is the most common, so let's just go with grid. Here you're gonna show the, a certain number of items. Note that you can only show up to 30. This has been this way for as long as I can remember. So if you wanted to like, if you're like trying to build a custom blog page and using a summary block to show your blogs, just note that you'll need to add like a see all blogs button or something if you have more than 30. Um, okay, so we'll say we wanna show three because that's what we have. Your aspect ratio of your photo. So do that based on, you know, what makes sense for the photos you have. Text size, we can, play with this more with CSS. So I just kind of choose what makes sense-ish, um, but I tend to kind of hate all of them. So we'll edit that with CSS. Center, you know, aligning your text, etc. What do we want to show? The title, the image, the excerpt. If you want the read more link, go for it. Um, I'll keep that toggled off for now. Um, metadata, if you do have that on, you can tell it where to go. Okay, here is where my beef starts with this. So if you go into size and spacing, the column width is the one and only way that you get this to fit um, full screen. So 
let's like turn this up here. That's great. I'm on like a 16 inch MacBook. And if I go down to a 13 inch or like 14 inch size, it's going to bump it to another line, which is super annoying. I'm like, why can't we just choose how many we want to show and this be responsive? Um, really cool, easy, simple um, plugin. I've linked it to actually solve this problem where you can set the number you want to show instead of it just using this feature. So we do have a solution technically, and I have a couple CSS bits that help us with this as well. Um, gutter width is the space between. So for the purpose of some of the CSS I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to move my column width down a bit. And so it's not full width at this moment. I just want to show you a couple things. Um, back over to design. And then down here, you get into, if you wanted to have a background on here, go for it. You can, of course, style that with your colors. You can add a stroke to it. You could change, you know, make rounded corners, change the padding, um, add a blur, et cetera. We're not going to do that today. Um, pretty simple to style, though. Again, I'm going to bring up the spacing as high as I can. One of my other beefs with this, I'll go ahead and save is there's just a ton of space at the bottom and it's super unnecessary and there's like no way to get rid of it, except with CSS, of course. So one thing I'll show you, um, actually, yes, real quick. If you don't wanna deal with CSS, but you wanna kind of balance this out, you'll notice if you center it, it doesn't really do anything. If you push it to the bottom, well, it's gonna act weird. Sometimes pushing it to the bottom does help. Let me save and see if it does anything. You can see my beef with this. Like, it's like just so finicky. Like, why I'm asking you to be at the bottom and you're not. So, it didn't work. All right. So, jump over to site styles really quick. Go into your colors. We're in dark one. So, let me hop into dark one. You can click kind of like around it and it should bring up the summary block. So, you don't have to scroll and find it. And here you can change the colors. Um, I'll show you how to do this with CSS as well. If for some reason, sometimes I just do things with CSS because it's kind of easier. I, hate having to like scroll through this. I don't know why they don't make the titles like more obvious. Anyway, but that's how you would edit the colors that way. All right, so we have all of the basic setup done and now let's use some CSS. So I'll come over to my CSS panel and I'm copying this all directly over from the post so you can do the exact same. Um, first thing I want to do is adjust the padding. So again, how we talked about, there's just too much space under here. Uh, if I could spell adjust, adjust the padding under the summary block. You could see it, oops, already bump up a bit when I pasted this in. Um, you can see it more, like if you go into editing mode, you'll see that now there's not this like obnoxious space at the bottom. You can adjust this. Um, if you go down to, I had it at 10 because again, it's still kind of weird and sometimes it doesn't really go much lower than that, but this is like super, super helpful. Um, so that's step one. The next thing I like to do because of the whole issue of the like filling the whole width and then if you go to a different screen size, it messes up. Is I like to just center it. So instead of trying to just do a full width, I choose how many I want. I make them like less than full width and I use this to center them. Um, and that, I don't know, just makes me feel better because otherwise they weird stuff happens. So you can totally use that and center them. Okay. Um, other thing, like I mentioned is you can totally edit the text with CSS. Um, so in the style panel, the site styles, you saw that you can edit the color, but you can't edit the size. The size is just those general small settings we saw, like small, medium, large, extra large. So I do like to specifically tweak the size with CSS. So you can, you know, of course, add change. Uh, you could add anything. You could add like text transform uppercase. Like you can add whatever CSS you want here. Um, you can change the color if you would rather do it in the CSS rather than in the site styles panel. Um, next is the excerpt text. So super similar. Um, I obviously would not have both of these in turquoise, but so you can at least see the effect. Same there. It's like any CSS. You can add anything that applies to the font there. Um, this is a really like oddly specific one I had one use case for, but it was kind of cool. So I had a client wanting uh, like we basically used a summary block for like a big kind of gallery. So I went into a blog. I think I created a blog and created like an event or something along those lines or a project or something and put a bunch of photos in 
and basically like didn't do titles, didn't show titles, nothing. I created it. It's just this big kind of gallery. Um, and I wanted to remove the like click basically is the reason for this. So normally, so let me like get rid of this really quick. You can click on your summary blocks because you're going to be going to this blog post or to the product or whatever. But this allows you to remove that click if you wanted to use this in a different way. It just gets allows it to be like more creative. So you can use this as more like a gallery. Um, I did like a hover effect on it. So it like I, what I did that time was show I had it as a gallery. And if you hovered over it, um, it disappeared and showed the summary block underneath it, which was like different photos, something along those lines. Um, so you can get more creative with it when you don't have the click enabled. Um, okay. Another one is adding a border around the entire thing. I do want to note, if you look at this and you're not in full screen, it's going to look like this. Like it's not, the spacing is not going to be right. And of course, it's still not right. I think the issue here, so this is always kind of the trick with CSS, is sometimes you get some stuff that like doesn't like each other. So I think that's centering. Nope, that wasn't the issue. I'm going to pause while I find the issue. Oh, right, of course, like that makes sense. So the padding was the issue. So if you're going to use this, you can like tweak it manually, um, but you would want to adjust the padding. So you might not want to center and you might not want to get rid of that bottom padding. Um, in which case, like if I'm going to use this, I would come in and kind of use it that normal way to where everything's full width. So this is why the videos are always nice because I can show you there's always like some weird finicky things. Um, so that's how the border would need to work. And then a little simpler, you can just add a border around photos. You could do both, but I'm just going to get rid of this one so we don't just have borders galore. Um, but this one adds borders around the photos. So, and of course, again, something is going crazy. Let's find out what it is. Okay, I had to take a second, but I just had the wrong selector. So I, this is updated in the post, but um, this is always fun because I'll test the CSS before I make these videos and of course it always works and then I get in here and it doesn't. So this one is corrected. So yeah, you can add the border around your photos. Um, all right, cool. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.